All right, and welcome back to the Shardbreaker podcast. We're on episode 5 of Elantris. We're doing chapters 18 through 21. Very exciting. I'm Midnight, and I'm here with Darkness. Hi. And Mythic. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Such a jerk. But we had some exciting chapters, I feel like, this week. They were really getting into, I feel like, uh, more of like the story, a plot here. Things are happening. Right? Something like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so, we started with chapter 18, which was a Harathan point of view. Uh, and we start with Dilaf walking into Harathan's study to see an Elantrian sitting on a chair. Uh, and we learn his name is Diren. Uh, Dilaf uh, is immediately caught off guard, and he curses in Fjordal, which uh, surprises Harathan because he's like, "Damn, he's so he's so like into like Fjordal that like even his like automatic cursing is in that language." Oh, I just thought of something. He's basically like a weeb, but f- like for mm-hmm. the Durethi religion. <laughs> yep. He's a fucking Durethi weeb. Like you. Wow. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> Rude. Um, but yeah, so Harathan begins examining the Elantrian and asking Dilaf questions, speaking in Fjordal so that the Elantrian can't understand them. Apparently the skin of the Elantrian is leathery and dried like an embalmed corpse. Uh, Dilaf also explains how it always happens overnight and that the blotches are the first signs of the Shroud. Dilaf also says their insides are as rotten as the outside as their hearts don't beat and they bemoan their pain over time as Lord Jadis Fire burns their soul. Uh, Harathan then has Dilaf leave to prep for the evening ceremony as he worries about Dilaf spending too much time with the Elantrian. Because so I think he's like eyeing him up like, I want to murder this man. <laughs> oh yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, what did you think about the comparison of Diren's skin to that of an embalmed corpse? They're dead. <laughs> oh yeah. But... A bunch of dead people. <laughs> uh, I was like, I got like more caught up on the fact that they said it happens always during the night time and I'm just like no he technically he didn't say that he said that he can't find anybody who knows anything about it because it everybody that he finds is always says that they were asleep yeah so like yeah, no one so, actually knows how it happens or what the process yeah. is because they, they just wake up like that yeah so he didn't say like, it always okay. happens he just says that's the only people he can find Mm-hmm. Uh, what were you going to say, though, Darkness? Going there. I didn't mean to cut you off, I'm sorry. I kind of blanked. <laughs> Good job, Mythic. I know, I do that a lot. <laughs> it's okay. I'll probably, I'll probably come back to it. <laughs> Alright. Um, so, Harathan then begins questioning Diren, prom- promising him a full basket of bread and cheese if he cooperates. Uh, he wonders if the lack of heartbeat is actually it beating too fast to be detected, which would increase their metabolism and appetite. Uh, Diren says he was a peasant working for the Aeor Plantation and has been in Elantris for seven or eight months. Diren also mentions the gangs and that his wounds don't heal, which Rathen doesn't believe and just thinks the wound that Diren shows him didn't heal properly as it isn't bleeding. Rathen also thinks that he should generally keep people at a distance from the Elantrians as Diren wasn't very scary, which doesn't work well with their stance against them. Rathen then has the guard captain come back and take Diren away, along with some money to buy the man food as promised. Uh, so what do you think about the fact that Harathan actually gave the guard money to buy Diren food? Are you surprised? Yep. Because until then, I didn't think he was a nice person. Mm-hmm. But he seems to be a nice person. Ish. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's alright. <laughs> I mean, like he's he's here to like basically like convert everyone. Like he's part of this like horrible religion that like just like takes everyone out. But also, yeah, he, he like he does keep up to his word, and he's generally a pretty empathetic person. I think. I don't know. He's a confusing character to me. <laughs> I never know if I should like him or not. Reading through this book, I feel like he's, I feel like he's confusing to himself too. <laughs> uh, so Harathan then speaks with Dilaf again, saying it's time for the next step in their plan to associate Shukarath with Elantris. 
since the Karathi priests are the ones who prepare the new Elantrians to enter the city. Delaf makes a comment about whether they have enough time, which startles Harathan as he never brought up the timeline to Delaf, but thinks the man must just be guessing. He then says Delaf is to speak first tonight as he wants the hatred to come from their hearts, and then he will speak logically to them. Delaf also compliments Harathan's metaphor, which Harathan isn't sure if Delaf is mocking him or not. Uh, so first of all, do you think Delaf knows about the timeline, or was he guessing? I don't, uh, I don't think he knows, like, I think he knows something, but I don't think he knows, like, what uh, Harathan thinks he knows. I think mm. he's, it's, I don't think it's a guess. I think he's, it's more of, like... Maybe, like, an educated he, guess? Like, he's kind of figuring uh, things out, but doesn't know all the details? I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, I think he's more, talk, like, I think he's talking about something that uh, Harathan believes he's talking about the same thing, but he's not. Mm, like he's talking about something else. He, yeah, like he like there's a different thing that's gonna happen, and he's like, "Oh, it's coming real soon," you know. But mm. yeah, Harathan thinks one thing, and he thinks another. That makes sense. Yeah. Huh. I don't think he actually knows what. I think Harathan is just being paranoid. I don't think he actually knows what Harathan's like ultimate goal is. <laughs> you think that the same thing, Darkness? You were saying. Uh, I think it makes sense, but I didn't really have, like, much of a thought for that. Hmm. Uh, also, d did you think Delaf was mocking Harathan when he was complimenting him? When was he mocked? Like, he, um... he, he made a compliment, and Harathan notes that, or, uh, Harathan makes, like, this metaphor, and then uh, Delaf is like, oh, yes, that makes sense, or he, like, he, like, compliments the, the... The metaphor and Harathan's kind of like thinking like he can never tell if Delaf is mocking him or actually being serious. Oh, I have no idea to be honest. I, I, don't I remember think, that. So I think that he's like, <laughs> I think that Harathan is like getting like hella self conscious, right? And he's paranoid, right? And like, I don't think Delaf was uh, I don't think Delaf was like intentionally mocking him, but I feel like that's like. At some point, like further on, he's gonna start doing it, <laughs> and yeah, he's gonna right. be like, he's gonna be like, you know, you're not that big of a deal, so I'm gonna make fun of you here and there. I see. Um, so we then move to the sermon, which apparently takes place outside now, as there are too many people to fit inside the chapel, so they're obviously gaining a decent audience. Uh, Haratha notes that he is less envious of Delaf now, and that he feels like he is the master behind it all for the moment, uh, as Delaf moves the crowd's hatred towards Shu Karath. However, Delaf then suddenly reveals Diran tied to a post with cuts on his face. Delaf gets the crowd shouting at the Elantrian, and Haratha notes that Diran no longer seems lucid, just lost to his pain. And he's, like, shouting, like, kill me, kill me, the pain is too much, or something like that. So, was, what were your strange. thoughts when that, when, like, Delaf revealed this? When he revealed what? When he revealed Deer in there. Like, what, what were your thoughts when yeah. Delaf kind of, like, was like, look, the Elantrian! And, like, poor Deer is there, like, all fucked up and screaming. <laughs> See, I had this feeling that that was going to have, like, he was going to kill the Elantrian the moment after he was, like, you could tell he was just mad and, like, he wanted to kill him originally. Mm -hmm. But, like, and then he told the guard, he told the guard to take him away. And so it was a little confusing to me why he was then there. I originally thought, oh, the guard betrayed him, and the guard also has the same view. But then it comes up later that he talks to the guard, and the guard's like, he was a, he's a priest, I had to listen, kind of idea. Yeah, I think I think he basically says that, like, Delaf had said that Harathan had changed his mind. Yeah, exactly. And so he didn't know what, he just did what, you know, any other sane person would do. It was like, okay, well... What were your thoughts, Darkness? Well, I thought uh, the dude was going to die anyway, regardless. <laughs> uh, regardless of who was going to do it. But I pretty, yeah. I'm pretty sure at the beginning when I first saw him in the office, I was like, oh, fuck. Harathan's going to kill him regardless. You know, like, he's dead. Like, dead, dead. Like, Yeah, but Harathan actually was, actually was just going to yeah. let him go. <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah. he was going to for sure. But, like, I thought... Kind of like uh, piggybacking off what Darkness is saying. I thought when he said he told the guard to basically get him food and then send him back, that's when I thought his 
death was coming, you know, because mm. like I figured he was gonna go in there and you know have food, and they're gonna you know all chase him and kill him, kind of idea, or beat him to you know near death. Mm-hmm. You know, when I read that there was an lantern in like his like office or whatever or wherever they were, mm-hmm. I thought he was gonna put like my brain was like instantly an image of like him pulling out like a scalpel or something. Oh jeez, <laughs> <You know, geez. laughs> about it, like, on the spot. I thought the same thing. I was, but he said it was. They were sitting in a chair, and I was like, "Who just lets their person sit in a chair?" <laughs> you know, he just he just wants some questions answered. He just wanted some information. Yeah. Was well, I mean, he could have just like shackled them or something. Nah, they're not dangerous. They're just lanterns. Did you scared to get hurt to be dangerous <laughs> most of the time? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so her, uh, where was I? Uh, so Harathan quickly does his best to take control of the situation, getting on the podium and taking the torch away before Delef can burn the lantern in front of everyone and potentially cause a riot. He turns the conversation back towards Shoot Karath and the fact that they won't outright call the Elantrians demons. The crowd eventually agrees and then disperses. Uh, Harathan then turns to speak with Delef, curtly dismissing the guard captain who asked if he had done the right thing when he had been told to mm-hmm. come back. Rathen then burns the Elantrian, noting that he doesn't think the man can go back to Elantris in the state he is in. He doesn't let DLF be the one to put the torch to the man, though. He also notes that the Elantrian seems to burn too easily. So, what do you think about Harathan burning Diran and not letting DLF be the one to do it? Well, I mean, that's mercy to me, but... Yeah, yes, at that point I think that's oh. what <laughs> Harathan thought too. He's like, I can do nothing more for this man than kill him. Yes, and also like a power play move against uh, Olaf. <laughs> yeah, he was like, I'm. There's no chance I'm letting DLF be the one to burn this guy. Mm-hmm. He's like, No, no, no. We'll kill him, but I'm gonna be the one to do it. Blood is on your hands, Harathen. Well, I'm. I'm pretty sure there's been a hell of blood on his hands by now. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Mm-hmm. What's a little more so that other city, but yeah. what's a little more red in his ledger? I mean, they don't really bleed. Is there really much more blood on his hands? It's a it's a metaphor. <laughs> Making a joke. I know, but jokes are supposed to be funny. Wow. All right. So, uh, Harathan then scolds Delaf, saying he shouldn't have forced his hand. Delaf admits he got carried away, but doesn't think it would have caused a riot. They go back and forth a bit, but Harathan wins the argument and Delaf leaves. Harathan wonders if Delaf was trying to undermine him or just acting on his zealous passions. Harathan uh, decides he'll have to do something about Delaf. Harathan then glances at Duran's charred remains and thinks of pain, sacrifice, death, and the Dakor Monastery. Um, so first of all, do you think that Delaf is specifically trying to undermine Harathan, or was he just like so like so hating of the Elantrians that he's like, this is my only choice? <clears throat> Yeah, I feel like um, he's uh, he's taking it a little too far because he's like that, like excited and like you know, like people towards like you know, the Lantrians and like you know, excited to like get rid of them, mm-hmm. and that's definitely leading to like <laughs> to like him, quote unquote, misbehaving and just like uh, you know, acting out against like Harathan's authority over him. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's going to go to hell pretty soon, especially with how he's been acting, but, yeah. Did you have any other thoughts, Mythic? No, I just, I think it's both. I think he's he's testing his boundaries with Harathan, and then also he's, like, you know, also doesn't like the Elantrians, so. Yeah. Uh, also, this is the third time the Dakor Monastery has been brought up. Do you have any new thoughts on it, or no? No, not really. <laughs> no. But <laughs> it's obviously super important. <laughs> so. mm-hmm. I mean, Harathan keeps thinking about it a lot recently. He seems to be it's come up both episodes now. So that's two. Uh, mm-hmm. So we then skip to Harathan with his Seon out of its box. As he uses the sand to make a call, he notes that he only has 70 days left to convert Erlon, which seems like a lot, but at least, uh, which doesn't seem like a lot, but at least the nobility are congregated in K as Wern mostly cares about the leaders being Durethi and not the masses. Uh, the person Harathan calls 
is a mouse looking man named Fortin, who apparently smokes various subst substances, causing him to have a chronic cough. He is also apparently an unparalleled genius who, while being Dorethy, also takes part in the Jaskari Mysteries. Uh, Harathan requests an elixir from him, at least two doses, uh, to be sent ASAP. Apparently, it will take at least two weeks for them to get to Erlon. We also learn that Fortin thinks that Harathan can pray to communicate with Fortin's Seon, and not that Harathan has his own Seon. Harathan thinks uh, that for all of Fortin's faults, he is still an invaluable resource. Uh, so, what did you think of Fortin, and what sort of elixir do you think Harathan has ordered? Uh, so, first off, this is what I was talking to you out of, off of uh, off podcast about the fact that I feel like this guy. Okay, so I listen to an audiobook, and the person that does the voices for this mm -hmm. did the same exact voice they did for the guy that is helping. Whatever is god damn what's his name? The prince that Rowden? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's helping Rowden that uh, is like helped him since day one. Oh Galadon? Uh, Galadon's voice? They did, this, they did the same voice and I was like, wait, are they the same person? Are they from similar countries? Because maybe he's trying to do a similar accent. Maybe. But or... like they had the same like everything and it was really weird to me. I think. Um, so it made me think maybe because we already don't I already don't believe that guy or whatever and him telling Rowden he's a farmer uh, I feel like there's more to it um, and so maybe he is not the same person but they're very similar you know somehow very similar in some aspect it's from Sikla where was the map of the continent again mm -hmm. Country map. Do, do, do. Oh, Sikla's just the name of like this whole fucking area. <laughs> That's not helpful. Duladel is in Sikla, so they might be from the same country. Maybe. Maybe I, I just want to put that out there that it is very, possible. It's just a similar. It's a very similar voice. Like it was insane. Mm hmm. At first, that's why. At first, because like, I don't pay very much attention to this book in general. <laughs> uh, so when I heard the voice, I was like, "Oh shit!" It went to Rowden's thing, and then I realized it wasn't on Rowden's thing; it was on Harath, whatever Harathans. I was like, "That's weird." <clears throat> mm. Here's the thing, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, in the group chat, like the old. Oh one. yeah, no, I, I already looked it up. Thank you, though. Yeah, she can look things up, all right? She can uh, just look anything up she wants. Yeah, the, We, the other, on the other hand, are stifled. <laughs> <laughs> the other two are there, too. Just like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. Wait. Hmm? I had thoughts. Repeat the question? Uh, my, <laughs> my, I, I, so technically Mythic only answered half it. So my thoughts were, or my question was, what do you think of Fortin? And also, what sort of elixir do you think Harathan has ordered? I have no oh. idea on the elixir, to be honest. It's going to be something... I feel like it's going to be something that kills somebody. Like a poison yeah, or something? Like, like, a king. Yeah, like a king. Or, like the king or something. Yeah. Um, what if it's like a version of holy water? <laughs> um, uh, the dude is definitely like some sort of fanatic, like, sort of, like Dila, but more on the like, what it's supposed to be, you know? Mm. Instead of, like, his own views. Well, he's, like, apparently, like, super um, religious. Like, he, he shows really, like, religious for his Dorethy, but he's also, like, super into these just scary mysteries, which Galadon is, like, hates. He's like, they're, <laughs> they're like, a perversion of my religion. Fuck them. Uh-huh. So. Um... We also had a theory going around about the seance, right, and how they could be in, like a part of why they become a mm -hmm. lantern or whatever. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, I I was reading this and I I completely forgot that he had a seance because he like literally doesn't like comment on it is or it? whatever. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> I'm just like this dude is gonna be fucked somewhere like throughout the book and just like die and like become an lantern, <laughs> and he's even like self hating and shit. 
uh, I think specifically Horton or uh, Raffin or Raffin, uh, I think specifically I think the D-Laf. other guy's gonna be. Yeah, I feel like the other guy needs to die and become a D-Laf? a lynch. Yeah. I I think D-Laf's gonna be the cause. <laughs> oh, oh, of of Raffin's death. Yeah, and then I can see just, it. like turn. Mm. Yeah, I can see it. What if like his poison backfires and d left see the d left like you know like <laughs> let me use it a little. <laughs> d left thinking three steps ahead and he actually like switches their glasses or something. <laughs> yep. Damn. He turned his water into wine so it doesn't get affected. <laughs> yeah, only only Jesus can do that. <laughs> Uh, so that was chapter 18. We then go to chapter 19, which is a Rowden chapter. First of all, we get mm-hmm. a new Aeon, which is Eon, meaning willpower and endurance. Uh, but yeah, so we start off with Rowden dreaming of his time in Elantris as a child. Uh, the Elantrians are described as shining, their skin silver and hair white. Also mentioned that there are Aeons everywhere on the walls, signs and doors, some being actual like usable ones and some just being decorative. Um, and apparently some areas even have an Aeon called Aeon Tia, which allows the Elantrians to transport themselves around the city, which sounds useful as hell. I wish we could do that. <laughs> I want to just teleport around areas. Um, and then we get to... Re- I mean, like, think about it this way, though, right? Like, if we had teleportation, what's to stop us from, I don't know, accidentally teleporting into somebody else? It's true. There just happened to be in that exact spot you're teleporting to, and <laughs> something's gotta happen. Two things can't be in the same spot at the same time. You become one. <laughs> you explode. No, you just explode. Or, yeah, or it's a, a. I don't know if either one of you have seen The Boys, but it's like The Boys scene where they just explode. <laughs> that would be a horrific scene. That does not sound great. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> I'd watch the teleporters all day. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Just darkness doing some people watching by the teleporters. They're just like, all right, come on. One of them's going to blow up one time. <laughs> uh, so we then get to Rowden's family. Iodon is apparently distrustful of the Elantrians. Uh, and apparently his mother is just, like, very nervous because her son apparently is, like, apparently, like, could, like, die from this injury. <laughs> mm, I don't uh, know about that. It's only a broken... Like well, it's like a scom- it, it says his leg it's... bone shattered in multiple places and was sticking out of his skin. Originally. Also, the infection, the hmm? infection was like rising up. Yeah, I was gonna say, and then when they fixed it, though, he got an infection, and the infection was apparently like best case scenario they amputate his leg. Worst case scenario, it's already spread past the leg. It's okay. If he died, he died. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so he's like, he's like literally like, this is our last chance, or our son is pretty much dead. Dead. Uh, so Rowden is brought into a building, and an Elantrian lays him on a mat and begins drawing an Aeon. Rowden notes that he can feel an immense pressure behind the Aeon as, a, as it's being drawn, like a river trying to force its way through a small crack. The Elantrian draws Aeon Ian, but with lots of extra lines and curves. And when she was done, the wound was completely gone without even a scar. So what were your thoughts about the old version of Elantris and your thoughts, uh, and the thoughts I'm younger Rowden had about the magic? Old interest looks seemed really cool, and I mean it was a dream. Well, it was a dream memory, I think. I think he's he says this is pretty much what happened. I, I'm trying to think of like, what the difference between the feeling of like what he felt when the magic was casted there, and then what they can do now. Mm. Cause he said it felt like, like intense pressure like a flood in through like a crack or whatever right yeah he said it felt like there was like this big force pretty much being forced through like this tiny crack in reality or something so there's there was definitely like like a like <laughs> like a well of magic like like there was a lot of it yeah this goes i'm just i'm just thinking because this clears up a little bit of his own theory later on yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. Do you want to wait to go into it then? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll move on then. Uh, so Rowden then wakes up. Uh, he still feels pain. Uh, he notes that his pain is from his cuts and bruises. 
uh, that were infiltrating his dreams, and that although he's only been in Lantris for three weeks, his pain was growing worse. He also notes that mostly the pain is constant, but for him it seems to come in waves. So why do you think Rowden is so affected by the pain, and that his seems different than the others? Did we ever clear up if all of them can use the the magic or not? Um, no, we, can. we don't know. We know that Galadon and Rowden can. I don't think we've seen anyone else try. But we've also we also know that there are other people that can use it because of the dude that died over there. Oh yeah, Deere said he saw people, but he wasn't able to do it. He said he he was like not able to make it work. Yeah. So. Maybe it's people with seance that like are able to, mm. and we just don't know what happened to uh, G whatever his name is, Garen? G Galadin. Oh, yeah. Galadon. Yeah, there you go. You think maybe he had a seance as well? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I see. Do you have any thoughts, Mythic? Again. No, not really. <clears throat> Alright. Where did, where did, uh, what's his name? Gal Galadin, uh, say he was from? He's from Duladel, which borders Aralon. Okay. And so he became an Elantra. Yeah, he, th he says that, uh, generally people of Aralish blood... They don't become Elantrians. We get into this, I think, a bit later in this chapter. But they don't become Elantrians mm -hmm. unless they're in Aralon. But because his, it sounded like his farm apparently like was right on the border of Aralon, so he was able to still turn into one while he was at home. Mm -mm. I think it's more to that. But... <laughs> uh, so... Oh wait, no, we do go into that too, right? Like, yeah, we go into that a lot. Uh, this chapter. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so Rowdon then meets up with Saulin, who apparently has amassed a few men to become a guard. Saulin tells Rowdon that Galadon had finished the plowing and had been instructing a team of planters. Uh, so apparently... Uh, oh, actually, it gets into that next sentence. Uh, so they walk on a cleaned cobblestone path, and Rowdon sees Galadon, who seems to truly enjoy the farming activities. So it does seem like, whether that's his full story or not, he, he was a farmer, he does know about farming, and he generally does seem to enjoy that side of things, but... Who knows, if, if you guys are right, maybe he was just, like, a hobby of his and not actually, like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everything about him. So I know you guys don't think he's telling the whole truth there. I just don't. I don't think he's telling any of the truth, to be honest. Well, I mean, he obviously does have some farming knowledge and yeah. he enjoys it. Just winging it. Well, he seems <laughs> to be enjoying it, and it seems to be going well. I think someone sure. would notice. <laughs> if no, what if he fucking... enjoy something, though, without actually have knowing how to do it? <laughs> what if he's like, wow, I could really pull this off, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean darkness, play, darkness plays Valor in it, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. he, he just actually lived near a farm, and he's he's like, oh, I saw people doing this every day. I could totally bullshit my way through this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um... Uh, where was I? Uh, so Rowden also notes that Galadon seems more in control of himself than when Rowden first met him. Uh, Rowden is not finding that keeping himself busy is helping him, though, like it seems to be helping everyone else. Um, and Elantrian then suddenly rushes out of an alleyway to attack, and Salon defends Rowden, eventually beheading him before a group of four others show up. Salon's men, Dash, and three others appear to help defeat the group uh, of Shower's men. So, do you think Shower's men are going to keep showing up? And what do you think they're going to do in the future if they do show up more? Hold on. What's that dude's name? The one that's defending him? One that's, uh, Shaolin? Bro, if he dies, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> you like him? <laughs> yeah, he's like one of my favorite characters so far. Mr. Guard. The guard? Like the guard. his guard, is Shaolin. The one with the sword? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one that beheaded the thing. Yeah. 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 Also, I do think they're going to keep filming, and then I think he's going to have the most struggle, because he literally walked up to the other ones and were like, hey, you know, like, join me or whatever, and they joined him, and, like, yeah. this is going to be the complete opposite. Like, he's yeah. going to lose people here. And I think Galadon mentions later, like, Karada and Andin were pretty, like, normal people. Like, Andin kind of was, like, pretending to be crazy, and Karada was a reasonable person. 
Whereas Shara's men are all like super crazy and not all of Andon's men or Tan's men followed him. It was only like the most reasonable ones that did, which wasn't even the majority. So. Wait, I, like out of like, okay, this is unrelated, but like, do we, did we go through what happened to his mom? Uh, to Rowden's mom? We just, I think she, it was generally just discussed that she, she died at some point and then he remarried. Uh, okay, so, uh, new theory. Okay. She's, no, no. uh, Elantrian. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. She got killed. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might have brought that up previously in, like, <laughs> one of the early episodes. Have I? I think you brought it up know, in, like, episode one or two. Episode. If, if he could just send his, like, his son, like, out, like, that fucking fast after that happened, I wouldn't doubt it. Maybe it was Warbreaker. Maybe it was Warbreaker where you were like, they just killed off the mom. <laughs> yeah, that was Warbreaker. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you just always think the moms get Warbreaker. killed off. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> well, technically she was killed off, but um, right? Hmm? Or was it that? I don't know. I don't remember. That's like the past book. Anyway, um, yeah. If like if he has like the guts to just throw his son that fucking fast into Atlantis, I don't doubt that he did the same to the mom. I see. Because think about it. They're not that very recognizable, and he probably doesn't remember her that well. I don't think and... it was, like, super long ago, because she was alive when he went to Elantris, and he was, like, I think, like, what, 10 or 12 at that point? So I think she was like a t- he was, like, a teenager when she died. Yeah, but, like, you know, when time passes and people, like, are dead... I mean, I think it's been less really than a decade since his mom died. <laughs> Maybe a decade at most. Um... Yeah, with the Dastry... The, um, like, big changes... Mm-hmm. Uh, she could just be one of the corpses he walked by. Yeah, like, I guess she down. could just be a hoe. Right. <laughs> she could be a hoe. <laughs> she could just be a hoe. I mean, I mean, she is a hoe. So. Uh, yeah. uh no, I think I don't know if you answer. Oh, go ahead, darkness. But I think she, I, I think if she, if this is the situation, they're gonna like you know, mm. they're gonna see each other at some point. <laughs> Yeah, if she is an Elantris and not, like, completely out of it, then, yeah, we'd, we'd expect that that would be brought up at some Cause, point. Wait, because, uh, where'd he get the Seon from? I don't think we get told who he got the Seon from. I'm gonna say it's from his mom, because... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think his dad would have it, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, I'm, I'm... So unless he yeah, got it from a grandparent. So... Or, or bought it on the black market. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm saying it's from this mo- from his mom, and then like she has that potential because of the Seon or whatever to become the Elantrian. Mm. So yeah, that's my whole theory there. I see. Mm. What uh, was the question? <laughs> Mythic, did did you answer the the, the question about do you think Shower's men are going to keep showing up? Oh no, I already know that they're going to show up more. <laughs> what do you think they're going to do in the future then? Do you think they're going to keep showing up? They're going to keep trying to kill him. I think he's gonna pull up with his men. You think he's gonna come with and come himself? Or either that, or the um, Rodin's gonna really need something from wherever they are. Mm. I mean, eventually, Rodin to to do the theory that I have, Rodin has to go talk to them and like befriend them. So well, it sounds like that's what he wants to do. We're gonna come up on that in a second, which is pretty much my next paragraph. So I'll just go into it, which is uh, Galadon then comes over and notes that they were likely here because they had heard about the corn. Um, mm-hmm. Rowden responds that he wants to give these men their reason back as he doesn't want the Elantrians constantly fighting for their lives. Rowden also recognizes one of the men as one of Tan's old followers and notes that a majority cannot join the group. Um, so yeah, my next question was, do you think Rowden will be able to bring Shower and his men to his side? Like he yep. did the others. I don't... I think if Ben... Mm. I think he's going to have to give something up, but I think he will be able to do it. I think he's going to give people up by accident. Like... Not by accident, but like I don't, know, like, I don't think he's gonna give people up. I think, but I think he's gonna have to give something up. He's gonna lose people, is what I'm saying. Mm, maybe. Because I don't think it's gonna be that easy, and just like you know, I think there's gonna be fighting, like hella fighting. Yeah, it seems like a Shara's men definitely and Shara are definitely seem like the the hardest to get through to. They're the most like animalistic and brutal ones. I was thinking that, yeah. Um, so we then learned that Rowden had collected as many of the Hoed as he could find and placed them all in a building together. He 
He then asked his group to visit the Hoed daily, which Rowden also does, and found that their screams and cries had grown quieter over the days. Apparently Ian also tended to float through the room frequently. Uh, so what do you think about uh, how the Hoed had become quieter now that people are kind of like talking to them? It gives them a focus, so... And they, can put, they can cut out their pain. I don't think they'll recover in any way besides just, you know, like, a focus, so... Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. Uh, so Rowden then has the killed man brought to the Hoed building, except for the man who had been beheaded, is apparently completely beheading someone, seems to completely kill them, as like their eyes no longer blink, they're, they no longer try and speak or anything. So as far as they can tell, like, they're, they're completely dead if they're beheaded. Uh, mm -hmm. So he has him buried instead, which... Well, there's that answer. Mm -hmm. So apparently burning... Well, I guess burning you can't, yeah, you can't check, but beheading, it does seem to... At least everything stops moving, whereas all other injuries tend to, at least they keep uh, moving and mumbling to themselves. And they become hoes. <laughs> huh. uh, so Rowden then notices that Saolin is injured. Rowden is quite upset by this, but Saolin says that he wears the wound proudly as he got it protecting his people. Um, and then Coretta shows up. Uh, tracking sludge into the clean area, which uh, Rowden notes that uh, the one guy who's always cleaning would, would not be happy that she didn't clean off her shoes before coming in here. Because <laughs> he's worked hard to keep these places clean. <laughs> uh, so she had heard about the attack and rushed over. Apparently she had been relocating her people to the chapel area to keep uh, the group more unified, and also because it was cleaner, because apparently she never thought to clean the palace. I feel like, honestly, just because like the sludge is slippery, like... For the kids' sake, I'd want to at least clean up mm -hmm. the sledge so they That's don't, at least on the floors, so nah, they don't slip. They, nah, they learn. <laughs> They're one with the sledge. <laughs> they are one with the sledge. Um, but yeah, so she had, she had never cleaned, so... <laughs> <clears throat> um, so, uh, yeah, because it was cleaner. Is no excuse. <laughs> uh, and then Galadon also points out Tan, who has been studying all the architecture and sculptures of the area in detail. Apparently he's learned to bunch more techniques he's 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 real excited and has absolutely no interest in being a leader anymore when they said that i was That's like good. techniques for what like for building yeah like sculpting Just things architecture, architecture. Yeah. okay um so tan had said that about 30 percent of his group had joined them and rowden hopes that the whole other 70 percent didn't join shore that they had mostly just like decided to go their own way on the streets um, because Shora has the largest group anyway, so they're kind of fucked if 70% of Tan's men uh, joined them. And uh, Rowden also notes that Karada and Shaolin have been grabbing every newcomer in Elantris, which is also making his men angry. So basically they're getting absolutely no food from newcomers, and they're also like, like being kept away from the food that they're growing, and so they're, they're, they're not happy, Shaora's men. <laughs> Uh, Rowden then goes to studying, which he has decided was his task, as he was certain the ancient magic held the secret to Elantris's fall. Uh, he is studying a complex book that is more about things that have gone wrong with Aeondor in the past, which makes it, he has to, like, kind of reverse all the theories to figure out what was going on. Uh, he also uh, notes that Aeondor seems more like complex mathematics than kind of, like, mystical magic. Um, so do you have any thoughts about that, how the how like complex and like math based the magic is. Man needs to brush up on his algebra. <laughs> yeah, I probably wouldn't be good at that. <laughs> yeah, I feel like honestly, like okay. I don't know if I'd be very good at that either. Of like ugh, being so precise. Yeah, math never my strong suit. English though. <laughs> I feel like I'd be much better at Awakening than I would be at uh, using Aeon Door. <laughs> I mean, maybe if you awaken, though, you could also then, you know, get taller when you uh, return. Wow. Uh, so Galadon then says that Door is a Duladin word, not Aeonic. And Galadon states that it's related to Jeskar, but not the Mysteries, because he's like, fuck the Mysteries, they are not my religion. 
Uh, and that door is the unseen power that moves everything. He gives an example stating that gravity is what makes water flow, but the door is what makes it want to flow. Rowden then says the door must be why they continue to move and speak even though their bodies don't work, and that something happened to the door as it's now a trickle instead of what it was, which is why they aren't proper Elantrians. Rowden also knows <coughs> that there must be a link between the land and the door, as only people from Erlon and near the borders of Erlon that have Erlish blood can be taken by the Shoud. So what are your thoughts on Galden's explanation of the door, uh, first of all? Well, I like that he, the way he, not not the water thing, but when he talked, when he was talking about uh, if you hatch a bird from an egg, it still knows how to fly. And I was like, that makes so much sense. Because like, if you taught a bird from like its youth, there's no way it would just learn to fly because you can't fly. Mm -hmm. So how would it have learned? Like, where is it learning from? So it makes it like in his his version, it makes sense with the door being the reason because all things seem to know, uh, you know, inherently. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was pretty neat. Um, it also. But what about explains, the water wanting to flow? How does the water uh, feel? Water, mythic? water, do water doesn't have, have <laughs> like a brain. I so. That that's just that's just the religious mumbo jumbo crap that <laughs> I, nobody cares about. But the bird thing made sense. Mm -hmm. I don't think he, I don't I don't think he needed the water, the water analogy. He needed the bird analogy. Even Radon's like, "What the fuck are you talking about? The water wanting yeah, to move." So, the, when I heard the bird one, I was like, "Okay, yeah, that makes sense." And then I I I I spent like. 15 minutes trying to get my head around the water one because I <laughs> it made no sense to me because yeah. it just it didn't <laughs> why does the water want to flow darkness why it tell it me doesn't. it has no fucking feeling it has tell no me why it wants to flow also when they were talking about the bird all I could think of was Rhea <laughs> who? Rhea the movie, the movie? Uh, I've never seen it oh <gasps> Okay. <laughs> uh, also, my, my second question for this part before we move on to the next chapter is why do you think the magic seems to work uh, seems to work less the farther you get from Aralon? Why do you think it seems to be like based in Aralon? Because the center uh... of the like you know the origin of the magic is Elantris. Mm. Right. I feel like that well that well has something to do with the Shibra. Like, there's no way. <laughs> you think the well is like the important part there with the river? It's because the water wants to flow. It connects to the river. Yeah, it's all about the right. water wanting to flow. It's the fucking water. <laughs> Why does the water want to flow? Because the magic comes from the well. <laughs> so if we stop the water from flowing, the well will overflow, and then they'll get the magic back. See, I see. Right. Obviously. <laughs> right. So, like, thick. all you gotta do. Is no. uh, throw a, you gotta throw a bunch of elantrians in that like place where Rowden like flowed down the river or whatever. <laughs> Clog throw that all shit showers up. men down there. <laughs> Block up the tunnel. <laughs> mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, so then we move on to chapter twenty, which was a Serene chapter. Uh, so she's at a meeting with the nobles again, saying that she needs they need to help Iodon, which. It's kind of against their original plans, because their original plans were fuck Iodon. <laughs> uh, she notes that someone who is uh, not Drioak Cut Crushthroat, which is apparently a pirate, is sinking mm. Iodon ships. Apparently they think it was is this pirate named Crushthroat. <laughs> badass fucking name. It is a pretty bad badass name. Pirates? Pirates are cool in general. <laughs> so yeah, Drioc Crushthroat is not sinking Iodon ships, it's, it actually must be Wern. She also notes that Fjordan is funding Tellery and has proof as she looked into the fact that Tellery's finances have swelled in the last two weeks, and all his ships to Fjordan have made fantastic profits no matter what is being sold. Uh, Iandel notes that Tellery still goes to the Karathi Temple, but Serene notes that he can't convert until after he takes the throne or it'll look suspicious. Uh, they then discuss potential ways to help Iodon, but have trouble thinking of much that could work. They even bring up the pirate Crushthroat again, wondering if he's from Fjordal, but he seems to potentially be Aeonic instead. It's eventually suggested that maybe Iodon can make some sort of trade with Teod, as long as Iodon thinks he's somehow cheating a Bentio. Uh, so do you think this pirate's going to come up again later? 
Why do you think they've brought up this pirate? Well, he's obviously a problem that needs to be dealt with, so. If it's true, or somebody's using the name, but not, it's not an actual pirate. Would just make more sense if, you know, they didn't actually exist. You think it's just like a title that a bunch of people yeah. use, like some sort of like I think myth or a, legend? I, 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 yeah, I, think, I don't even think it's a myth or legend. I think it's a lie that's been spread through. It's uh, the harassment. The, the community. Harassment no? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, think it's, I, I think it's a lie that's been spread through the community so that, you know, they have this like uh, metaphorical boogeyman to blame things mm -hmm. on. Because you can't oh. catch something that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they then briefly discuss the matter that Sereni had previously asked of them, allowing their peasants to keep a percentage of the profits of crops. Uh, they said that they've done this, but obviously there, there's not much to see if it's affecting anything just yet, and they're hoping they'll see something before the three months are up and the tax season arrives. Um, and then Sereni brings up her widow's trial, uh, which makes all of the men super fucking uncomfortable. <laughs> Uh, and she insists that Harathan is trying to pit everyone against the Elantrians, and that Omen, the Karathi priest, won't label them devils, so they have to try and get the people on the side of the Elantrians. Because it was either the two churches are both against the Elantrians, or they've got to make it so the Elantrians are not as evil as uh, Harathan makes them sound to be. Uh, so she suggests giving food to the Elantrians uh, as her widow's trial, which makes the men even more horrified. They're like, holy shit, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh they Which, say that by the way i i did call out yeah correctly that she was gonna give food to them you did i'm so i got so happy when i saw that because <laughs> the be the throughout like the whole beginning of uh series chapter right now i could not keep my attention on it like it would not like think it, it wasn't like grabbing my attention but i read that she was gonna give food to the lanterns and i was like I read through that whole chapter so fast. I told you, Sir. We, we were talking about how Serena is the Siri of this book, and how she's the one who hears the podcast. So she heard you last episode and was like, "That's a great idea." I, for real, for real, yeah. Uh, so yeah, she they they say that Ida won't agree to this, and she says that it's her problem. She just wants a promise that they'll help her distribute the food, which they eventually agree that if she gets permission, they'll help. Even though they're only they're very be, much only like, because the one person said the yeah they're all just like I really don't want to go into a Lantris and she's like come on don't be fucking wimps and then this one guy that has been backing her this entire time makes a comment like yeah I will do it I'll take that and then everybody just follow falls in line with that mm -hmm. I don't know how many times I've said that I feel like because it's her uncle in there her like, uncle's not in this meeting. Oh, okay. They specifically okay. say that her uncle and her cousin weren't able to make this meeting. Ah, uh, okay, I didn't remember that. But, yeah. like, you still, yeah. like... I like, thought so, too. Yeah, right. But, like, it's just... I feel like the one person who should be backing her doesn't seem to be backing her very well. Mm. That's true. That's true, yeah. But this random guy does. Uh, so yeah, so what did you think about Serenity's plans for her widow's trial? Do you think it's gonna work out well, her giving food to the Elantrians? I fucking uh, hope so. I think she's gonna meet Rowden that way, so... I mean, it's a it, much it, higher it's chance. Definitely gonna, it's definitely gonna catch Rowden's attention. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely and, gonna notice. <laughs> and then they're gonna procreate on the spot, and oh, then... Oh gosh. Um, no. <laughs> right, let's hope not. Let's hope not, because dead dick doesn't sound very good. <laughs> Oh God! You you don't know if it works still. <laughs> I doubt it. Since we we've already talked about how the, talked their about blood, how blood doesn't flow. yeah blood doesn't work. Your heart's not so beating. like the the only the only way that that would work is if he died with a boner, and then it just stayed. But then technically their brain wouldn't work either. You're right. But maybe he's <laughs> thinking with his boner. Which. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're right. I didn't even think of that. You're so fucking smart. Mm -hmm. I know. It's because I don't think with my wiener. Oh my God. You're right. I gotta start like not doing that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, so, anyways. <laughs> we then skip to Serenity standing outside of Iodon's study. She asks Ash... Wait, so, wait, this podcast is 18 plus, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if it wasn't right. before, it is now. <laughs> So she asked right. Ash if he spoke to her father, which he said he did, and says Aventio will give financial aid 
uh, upon her request, uh, and then she forces the guards to let her into the king's study as she's family. She's like, you wouldn't, like, force I'm Eshim to leave, force. would you? Uh -huh. and, and she's also thinking, like, Eshim would never just show up. She stays fucking away from her husband. Yeah, I, I don't know about force. I think she persuaded them well, yeah, to just kind like, of yeah. not do anything, because they didn't, like, open the door for her. They just stood there. And we're like, like we, what do we do? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I guess I used the wrong word there, but yeah. So yeah. she she persuades them into like not doing anything. As she yeah, pretty much. Like, yeah, like almost like a guilt trip. It's saying. Well, it's more that she just confuses them because they're like, no one's let in. She's like, but I'm family, and they're like, we've never come across this situation before. Because <laughs> nobody's ever really wanted to see this king before. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So. Inside uh, the office, Iodon is wearing spectacles, which apparently Serene had never seen before, and he quickly takes them off, which, I wonder if he's, like, one of those people who's, like, glasses make me look like I'm, like, stupid, or, I don't know. He obviously thinks Ugly. Like, I don't know, he doesn't like to, apparently doesn't want to be seen wearing the spectacles. I haven't uh, worn my glasses in so long. Oh my gosh. I don't wear glasses, so. I need glasses. Don't yeah. you have glasses? Who, Mythic? No. No, you. Yeah, I said I wear them all the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't not wear them. Yeah, you she's, can. Like, she's literally she's blind. blind. Like, yeah, no, I would. I blind. literally wouldn't be able to play video games or read. No, she would. She 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 just wouldn't be able to live. She's blind. She couldn't see anything. <laughs> she'd have to get a see. She'd have to get a seeing eye cat and like. Uh, he demands to know why uh, Serenity's bothering him in private now. Uh, uh, just like she bothers him in public, and Serenity ends up revealing that she was pretending to be an idiot, and explains that she Which, knows. Hmm? With the greatest line in this book yep. so far, <laughs> she's like, "I'll pretend not to be an idiot if you pretend not to be an idiot." No, I think she says, mm -hmm. uh, "Let's just pretend that I'm intelligent for today." Yeah, or something uh -huh. like that. And, and then and then says, "And you do the same." Yeah. <laughs> like, mm, that's like a nice little dig. I was like, Jesus. Um, so yeah, so she explains that she knows, along with everyone else, that the ships have been sinking and wants to propose a deal for him to get the sole rights to selling silk and teot. In exchange, she explains that she wants to give food to the Elantrians for her widow's trial. Iodon eventually agrees, saying no more than ten people can go in, excluding guards, and that she only gets a two-hour window around noon each day to go in. Um, so were you surprised when Serene gave up her, her stupid act here? No. I mean, that's kind of the only place she had. I'm proud of her, because she, you know, stepped up, but... Mm -hmm. Also, do you think this is going to make Iodon more or less likely to work with her in the future? Like, do you think this is going to negatively or less. positively infect her? I think less it's like going to... It's going to force him to see her as a challenge, so... Yeah, and then maybe she'll end up dead, just like Rowden. <laughs> exactly, which is what I'm hoping for, because she has a say on it, and that's going to save her life. You know, a <laughs> life for a life. <laughs> Uh, so Serene then ends up mediating between the two kings, as her father is apparently not the best at finances, and uh, Iodon ends is up... What is he good at? Hmm? I said, what is he good at? He's generally good at being a king, he's just not good at making financial deals. Which, wasn't that the whole point, though? Like, mm -hmm. he's like... What was no, that's that's was Iodon, like, who's, who's the finance person. Her, her dad, Aventia, oh, is not good right. with finances. The T.O.ed you're king. Right, yeah, I know it's really it's really confusing, Darkness, because they're both technically her dad. Yeah, yeah. sorry. I usually I, I usually like, just refer to her her like real dad as her dad. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, yeah so... she comes in there and says, It's my father, I'll go into the room. Yeah. But anyway, so uh so yeah, she she mediates between them because she's like, My dad's gonna be fucked over if I just let Iodon walk all over him and <laughs> during this deal. Um, but eventually they do agree, and apparently Idon's like fucking ecstatic because he got like super good deal out of this. So he he's yeah, like pretty four times. It was like four times the yeah, price. Yeah, four that. times the price of normal. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, so he's he's pretty excited about that. And then Serene and Ash then go back to Serene's room and find it has not been cleaned. Apparently not for the first time. Ash explains that Serene needs to think more on what the servants think of her, even if she is kind to them. She then has a chat with Ash, talking about how the people loved Rowden, and talks about her own worries that she thinks she won't be able to stop uh, what is to come for Erlon. Ash then leaves to find a woman named uh, Mayala. Um, and then when 
Oh, sorry, I got distracted there. <laughs> oh, is that what happened? Oh. He's chicken darkness. Um, <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, so, uh-huh, Christy. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, Ashlyn needs to go find Mayella, and when Mayella, who I guess is like the head maid or something, when she arrived, she notes that apparently they had lost another maid recently. Apparently it's the fourth maid six. this year. I thought it was had... six. Pretty sure it said four. Was it, was it four? I thought it said six. I don't know. Maybe I'm... I could just be missing. Let's interpret it. They're about to make it six. Don't need to fucking double check this now. Wait, no, I don't know how math works. Hear me. End of this chapter. It was very near the end of that chapter. Yeah, it was like right at the end of this chapter. Okay, so Miela arrives. Uh, we lost another girl. Run away. Uh, maybe lost. Yeah, fourth this year. Fourth, and okay. so apparently they, okay. this is the fourth maid that has run away. Uh, and Miela hadn't realized that Serenity's room was part of that maid's tasks. She promises not to let it happen again before leaving. So why do you think the maids keep running away? I don't think, I don't think they keep... Away. Yeah, I think they're dying. I think they're getting killed because they keep walking into a place they're not supposed to. Mm. Mm, I don't know about that part, but I definitely think they're dying for some reason. Well, I thought the king was hiding something, which is exactly what, like, you know, what prompted him to kill them. But... Mm -hmm. I will be right back. Okay. Or it could just be them turning into an Elantrian. Do you, know, so you think they're just all becoming Elantrians? Yeah. No, I doubt it. I doubt it. Because, like, no, I think they're just getting killed because uh, they don't have seance. So that goes mm -hmm. against my theory. I see. Anything that goes against my theory, not valid. <laughs> I see, I see. So, uh, yeah, the next little part, of, the last little part of this chapter was uh, we skipped to the evening and Serene has heard a noise in her wall again. She wakes up Ash, who apparently really hates being woken up when he's sleeping, uh, and tells him that she believes that there is a secret passage in the wall that leads to the king's room, that he goes through it twice a week at the same time of night. Ash doubts this, as it hasn't been long enough to prove it's always the same days, but Serene seems pretty sure of it. Uh, so do you think uh, Serene is right that Iodon is going through this tunnel twice a week, and if so, what is he doing? He's what? Hmm. No, I'm like, um, cause I, I, I was just, I never got like through like a thought process of what he was doing, cause I don't even know if it technically is him, but. Mm. Okay, so what was the question? I'm sorry. I said, uh, do you think Serenia is right that Iodon is going through this tunnel in the wall, uh, twice a week? And if so, what is he doing? If he is going through the tunnel, I think he's. Dragging those maids in there and killing them. Mm. them. Does... Hmm. Maybe, maybe it's the wife. Eshin? Oh, that would be that would be a nice twist. Like, no, no, she's not killing that, but like, you know, like, going in through the passage, yeah. I think it's the wife. You think she's doing something secret? Because mm -hmm. you'd think they she would share to... a bedchamber. Huh? Because you think they'd yeah, share they a bedroom, share... her and the yeah. king. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking. I was like, there's... Are they are they actually you know husband and wife though if they don't share a bed? You can still be husband and wife and not share a bed. Nah. But like, but like he doesn't like women, so. Why don't you secretly that's, gay? You're not wrong. Yeah. Why mean, why does he we just wish, marry? We wish, but we already know that Brandon Sanderson doesn't do that shit. He does later, just not this early on. But not right now. <gasps> Why don't we start with those books? What? Because yeah, no, right? uh, I wanted to start with. Books? Oh, I wanted yeah. to start with the earlier books and also the single books. Are you like against LGBT? No, wow, I just night. no. It's it's literally like his oh, writing right. gets better over time. I didn't want you guys to be like, oh, this is like way worse written or something. It is though, obviously, because he's not LGBTQ friendly. <gasps> is there are gay characters? I think there's a trans character in Stormlight. There's like a potentially a uh, a romantic character or a sexual character in Stormlight. So what you're saying is, 
you're like keeping the good stuff from us. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna get to it soon. <laughs> mm hmm. What is soon? Like next year? The end of the year? <laughs> the, exactly. Yeah. We're doing Mistborn I'm this gonna... year. What if I like, completely disappear from the grid next year? You won't. He says she says that, but she has no idea. You remember, I'm catching on because every time Midnight asks a question, and it's like, yep. they're like, oh, that's important. That's what I just did right now. I'm gonna start asking you questions about the most like insignificant shit, or maybe I've <laughs> already started. You Not should do that though. You sure, I haven't already started doing that. I'm, no, I'm pretty positive you you haven't done it in this one because you literally finished writing these notes hours before, like, not even hours, minutes before we got to the podcast. <laughs> Don't call me out like that. <laughs> Y'all, she's not a prepared podcast person. Like, I no. have had a busy week. I'm trying my best, and also we're doing this a day early. Exactly. But also the fact that, I mean, I, I can't even talk. I, fin I have finished the chapters before in, like, not even like I couldn't even finish it before the podcast. Yeah, literally like seconds stuff. before we started. Yeah, exactly. So, anyways, um, so then chapter twenty one, we get our second Harathan point of view. Uh, and he is in his study and has invited Arteth Therid to join him. Apparently, he has other artists than just Dilaf. Uh, and he offers Therid the position as head Arteth. However, Therid refuses, which shocks Herathen greatly, as no Dorethi priest would refuse a position of such power. Uh, the man then quickly withdraws, and Herathen wonders if Dilaf is to blame somehow. Uh, uh -huh. do, you, do, you, do you think Dilaf is to blame? Yes. <laughs> Darkness? Dilaf is to blame for what again? Is Dilaf so to blame for the... man not wanting to take the position. Yeah. For refusing the head Arteth position. Yeah, probably. Uh, so, yeah. So Harathan then uh, realizes that he needs to deal with Dilath sooner rather than later, and that he had not realized how much effort Dilath would take to control. Harathan goes to Dilath's chamber and tells him he has an important task to deliver mm -hmm. a letter personally so that he is not, so that it's not lost on its way to Wern. Dilath accepts easily, which confuses Harathan, but he wonders if Dilath has been antagonizing, antagonizing him purposefully to get to Fjordan. However, as he's walking away, he hears Dilaf saying to send word out and that they were to leave immediately. Harathan turns back and says he'd only asked Dilaf to go, but apparently Dilaf has made about 30 people, uh, including important nobles, whereas most people only have a few, uh, into his odives. And Harathan could not say what Dilaf can do with his own odives. If they all leave, Harathan will either be stripped of many followers, and if they don't follow Dilaf's orders, he will have to excommunicate them from the church, which will completely fuck over his plans. Um, so, what do you think Dilaf's plans are here with all of these odives? Exactly what he just got. You think it was mostly so he could get sent away? Mm-hmm. He's securing his position here. Mm. He's a very nice tactician. He, he, like, knew Harath and was going to want to get rid of him, so he's like, I just got to make sure you can't. Exactly. Uh, so Harathan was left without a choice and tells Dilaf he has changed his mind and to find someone else to deliver the letter. He then goes back to his study for a while, angry, before heading off into the streets. He runs into two beggars, a boy and his father. The father asks Harathan for coins, and the boy tries to get him away from Harathan. There are beggars there? Oh my goodness. I know, right? Uh, and However, Harathan stops them from leaving and asks why he sees so few beggars around. The old man explains that they aren't allowed in the city during the day, and if they're caught, they get sent to the farms. Apparently, most of the beggars live in the other cities near Elantris that have been abandoned, and after the old man answers Harathan's questions, Harathan gives him two bags of coins, one for himself and his son, and then one for the other beggars. The man thanks him, but Harathan says to thank Jadith instead. So, what are your thoughts about Harathan giving these beggars some money? I, I think he's going to take both those bags and use them for himself, but... But it was a very, uh... out-of-character thing for me. I didn't think he was going to do that, so... What did you think, Darkness? Um... Repeat the question? Uh, what do you think... What are your thoughts about Harath and giving the beggars money? 
Oh, um. I think he's just like. I think he's just like. He's low key a kind person in some aspects. Hmm. I mean, he's so kind. It makes me. It makes me wonder if whatever happened in the other place was actually like planned by him. Doolittle. Yeah, like what you know, like where it had it had fallen. I'm wondering if he was he actually had good intentions, and it just ended up that way. Well, he's kind of implied that like he didn't want that to happen, and it like is severely mm-hmm. affecting him, and that's why he's like so intent on it not happening, Aralon. It seems like maybe, maybe something that's... went wrong in Doolittle. We haven't got it to the part where they discuss his fate three. No, that's uh the, this next little part. Next little part, yeah. Mm-hmm. This next scene, which I can go right into if you'd like. Yep. Sure. Uh, so we skip to Harath and up on the walls. He notes that the per- he notes the perfect circular border around K and that the town has spilled out from around it. And then Omen, the Karathi priest, approaches Harathan. Omen asks if Harathan remembers that when the Elantrians were around, the people of Aralon never went without food. Uh, Harathan doesn't answer the question, instead asking how Omen found him. Omen says it's well known that Harathan comes up here, and he notes that he does not have much of a stance about why Harathan does. He just wonders why he preaches against the Elantrians when he seems to only pity them. Harathan says he can hate them for the greater good and tells Omen not to mock him. Harathan then says that Shu Korath is too docile a religion, and that the Dorethi will sweep it away. Omen eventually says he didn't come to argue with Harathan, instead he came to ask him a question. Omen asks where Harathan's face went, faith went, as he says he hears no faith when Harathan preaches. Harathan tells him to go, and then ends up standing up on the wall for a long time that night. So what did you think about Harathan and Omen's conversation? Um, I think it's like something he definitely has to look into like he's already like you know faltering because of like what's happening around him and how d left is like you know affecting his shit so mm-hmm. i feel like it's gonna be like internal struggles you know in denial here and there <laughs> yeah i mean i I for a long time already didn't think he believed in his, this faith and uh, he had a, an ulterior motive so So yeah, so, you, so you, do you guys think uh, he's lost his faith then? I don't think he even had it. Mm. Well, I think Omen says that he, to get this high up, you, he would have had to probably have faith at some point. Or he could fake it. I mean, I don't know I how guess. many times. Like, there, there's... <laughs> I have literally gone to so many different churches, and I could fake it easily. Like... That I believe in something. It, it, just a good enough research. You could pretty much, you know, fake almost Yeah, anything. true. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so now for the overview questions. Uh, first of all, what do you think is going to happen in, in regards to Serene's widow trial? So I think you guys had said that you think she's going to meet Rowden. And that's like, uh, that's pretty obvious, to be honest. I also obviously know that it's going to affect uh, Harathan, or well, Dila, technically, because he's going to be the mastermind behind Harathan and everything, so. Yeah, I feel like they're going to try to sabotage her. Mm-hmm. That too, yeah. Yeah, do you think it's going to, how do you think it's going to, like, affect Elantris for her to be coming in with all this food? Do you think it's going to be, like, do you think maybe it'll get, like, Shara's men to be more, like, Dostin? tamed? Yeah. Mm. So it seems like the main that's reason they're attacking is because of the it's food. It's because of it... hunger. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking, too. Hmm. I think they're going to attack her. You think she's going to get attacked? Nope. Oh. That'd be good for her wrath, and honestly. <laughs> It'd mm-hmm. prove that they're horrible people. Yep. But I mean, in all honesty, like I can already see like the conversation that would go on where she could defend them by saying, like, you know, even people who aren't Elantrian would have that same, you know, feeling, and they might still try to attack. It doesn't make them evil. Like, the the collective evil it just makes that single person, possibly. Mm-hmm. I feel like she's, like, with that thing, it's, just like, a whole gamble. Like, it's either mm-hmm. all or nothing. I don't think she's going to be able to recover if she fucking gets attacked like that, honestly. Because they're already getting enough pull on the opposite side, so... 
especially with her standing, like her political standing. Mm-hmm. Like she's like she has she, no political standing. She's a woman. She's. She was. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I wasn't. I wasn't trying to be sexist about it, but that that's pretty much exactly how it is. There yeah, and Erlon women, women are obviously like in, in this religion. Yeah. So are not religion. Sorry, in this pol- in these politics. Mm-hmm. So like she doesn't really have a political standing. She has to. Pretty much I mean, she has a bit more than some women because she was so, like Rowden's wife, I guess. So, so if like. Rowden's mother gets like assassinated, they wouldn't be charged more severely than like if any other woman got assassinated. I think they would be, but I think yes, that... but not for political reasons, more because this man is the king, and like if you killed anybody in his family, it's it would be a big thing. You know? It's not, it's a though. Political it's, it's not though, because like he has money. If he has money, if you have money, and you don't have to be in politics, if you have money, and somebody kills you, you're gonna go after them with everything you got and i mean he own, he pretty much owns the city if he's the king so of course they're going to go after him with the stuff they have it'd be the same thing as if uh they attacked siri you don't think that the guy across you know wherever would also try to retaliate i doubt other nobles would want to like attack like you know uh, like the whoever kills another rich person you know I'm saying anything about nobles. Cause I'm talking about like the guards and shit like that. That's what I'm saying. Like, if anyone's that's like, why would the guards try and attack the people who uh, killed like any other rich man? If they have the money and you paid them off, I mean, yeah, obviously it's gonna be more of a standing if you're like royalty. But he owns them because he pays their salary pretty much. Like, of course they're gonna listen to the person who's paying them. If Anybody yep. were to be paying you, those guards or whatever, like the bodyguards that you're paying, are going to protect you and your family Ex- because you have Ex- money, not because of politics. Okay. I just don't so, think she has herself has a political standing. I think she has to work through the shadows and stand on the backs of all these other guys that she is standing on the backs of. Like okay, the, only, but she, the only way so, she can seem to do anything is to directly go to the king and state something. She can't go out into public and be like, hey, this is my political stance. I think this is what we should do. She could do that back in her her uh, city or whatever, but she couldn't do that. She can't do that here. Yeah, I guess so. I, I mean, I'm, that's just my view. I mean, mm-hmm. she might have a political standing. And, I mean, I just don't think the way that it's been going so far, they seem very sexist towards women, and I don't think that they would give her uh, the backing that she deserves if she didn't have, you know, all of these men to stand on the backs of. Mm -hmm. I think um, basically what we've seen so far is that with her group, she's got some political standing after kind of shooting kind of pointed out, like, this woman would have been our queen if Rowden had lived. Because, like, and that's how she got political standing, but only with, like, her small group. Like, we've seen Tellery completely dismiss her at a ball. Mm-hmm. And, like, just talk to the other men. So I think she, with, like, better men, she has some standing. And, like, with her little group. But I think outside of her group, yeah, people don't really care about her. And also she has been doing that stupid act. So I think people are looking down on her even more. I mean, but, like... And I think with, no with the women, the, she obviously has some standing. Any, though. But they, it seems like, yeah, the women are basically completely ignored. Yeah, I mean, even the, but I mean, you say that, like, okay, if Rowden were to still have lived, she would be the queen. But the, even the queen right now doesn't seem to have any, like, anything. Like, she's just But I think that's also timelines. because of Iodon. I feel like mm-hmm. th- there might have been some difference if Rowden was yes. king. I think if, Rowd- if I think if Rowden was king, yes, I think it would have changed. Yeah, and I, and I, I think, think that's what the, those men. I think that's what those men realize because they knew Rowden well. Yeah. I think because of the way Iodon treats Eshin, Eshin has less standing. So I think it's I all about how the king I, treats I, I, the I queen. I don't think she has like she can't she can't stand on her own and do anything. Like she can't go out there and be like you know preaching to the world and telling her politics and have anybody take her seriously yeah i think basically she does have to rely on the men she's a group of she's got she's got respect of her group but yeah she doesn't have much standing on her own Uh uh-huh yeah um 
But anyways, my next overview question was going to be, what do you think is going to happen next between Rowden and Shower's men? Uh, they're going to have a battle of some sort, I think. I think it depends on how close the uh, Siri giving them food and uh, them kind of having their uh, their like issues together is. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel like he's going to go out there to, like, she's going to come in, try to get food. They're going to come in to, like, uh, the other guy's men are going to come in to try to, like, basically strong arm her and get the food for themselves so that the rest of Elantris can't have it. And then Rowden is either going to come in and noticing that, and they're going to have a, like, like battle of some sort, whether it be wits or just, you know, weaponry. Mm -hmm. um, and then hopefully he'll notice his uh, what was to be his wife. Yeah, I'm assuming, because he's already seen her on the wall, I, it, it definitely seems like he'll recognize her. It's just whether she'll recognize him and whether he gives away who he is. Right. right. Mm -hmm. I don't think he will, though. That's the thing. I think he's going to stay silent. But will she notice anyways? If he does stay we'll silent. We'll see. I don't think so, but we'll see. What do you think, Darkness? I mean, Mythic's got a pretty solid theory going, uh, theory going on, so... Pretty solid theory? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and my final question was, what else do you think Delaf is going to do, and how will it affect Harathan's plans? So he's obviously got his own thing going on. Mm. That's like asking how... How do you think a madman will think? <laughs> <laughs> so. I don't know. I definitely think he's going to keep trying to push his own views into there and try to get uh, more of himself, you know, kind of like trying to take over kind of idea. Take mm -hmm. Harathan's position in some way. I see. It definitely seems like his ultimate goal, in my opinion, but I think he's... For lack of a better word, jealous of Harathan. Mm, you think he basically like, wants Harathan's spot kind of thing? Yep. And so he's trying to undermine him in order to gain that same prestige. Mm. He's obviously he's obviously got uh, in, he's gotten into the ears of like 30 of this man's close people, so like, you know, that would ruin his thing if they all left. So he's definitely already trying to undermine him in some way. Yeah. I think he's just going to get more bold as time goes on, especially when he's not being, like, he's not, like, being pressed about it. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of, like, these childish things of, like, him trying to uh, sway different things, uh, different opinions and stuff against him without actually trying to go against him, like, publicly. That's just how politics are. <laughs> all right. Well, that was all my questions. Was there any other thoughts you guys had, or are you anything else for those chapters? I think I got everything out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm all good. I was eating. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I see your mouth moving, but like I wasn't sure if you were like <laughs> muted or if you were eating. Nope. All right. Well, that's the end of this episode. Then, thank you guys all so much for listening and for uh, enjoying our podcast. We really appreciate it. Uh, next episode, we will be reading chapters twenty-two through twenty-seven. That is six chapters, so two chapters for each of the three main characters. Awesome. Yeah, so look forward to that. That was the last one we were doing four chapters. From now on, there's going to be like six to ten chapters per. <laughs> we're like halfway through at chapter like 21, and there's like 60, there's like 50 something chapters. Or, oh, yeah, 63 chapters. <laughs> Just because they get so much shorter. <laughs> so. Right, Darkness, we got this. Yeah. You excited for some short 
chapters. Mm, kind of. <laughs> Hopefully we get, like, no Harathan chapters. That'd be great. No, you're still- you're gonna get two Harathan chapters again next time. But Harathan chapters are good I, this I, time, right? I was- I was, eh, I was talking about, like, later sometime in the future. No, it's- it, all all of the chapters go pretty much, like, Rowd and Serenity, Harathan, Rowd and Serenity, Harathan. Until the end of the book? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Well, at least we know they don't die. Yeah, exactly, right? There's a spoiler, thank you. It's, they could still die at the end, who knows? Yeah, but they don't die before the end, so... I mean, I don't think you're going to expect any main character to generally die. I did. For the end I expect book. Tarathan to die. Tarathan's going to die. But he's going to be like... I think, I think he's going to sacrifice die. himself. I think he's going to sacrifice himself. Mm. I see, I see. He's too, he's too empathetic to not. You think things are going to like go wrong and he's going to have to sacrifice himself? Mm-hmm. I see. I think this guy who's trying to undermine him right now is going to do something that causes him to kind of first off show that he's not actually faithful to this god also that you know he's kind of has a soft spot for the Elantrian. Mm -hmm. He's just going to set fire to all of Elantris. Uh, let's hope not. Because <laughs> it's better than that their small little town. <laughs> I thought it's going to burn considering you know the wood is all like <laughs> All the Elantrians can burn, though. Apparently they burn really well. Yeah, they burn real good, apparently. Yeah, at least it's like fertilizer Wait, are or something. They, I wonder, are they made out of wood? That would be strange. I don't think so. <laughs> I just think the liquids in their body are gone, so like... So know. they're dry wood, yeah. yeah. I mean, you did say they're like leathery, <laughs> like on a bombed corpse. Yeah. They're kind of like dried out. Right, well, before the next podcast, I'm going to have to go to a, uh, a mortuary and I'm going to ask them if their embalmed corpses are, like, much more susceptible to fire. Interesting. Be like, can I burn one of your corpses? <laughs> um, you could just go to a, like, like, where they cremate them. Yeah, mortuary, right? I... Is it? Is it a mortuary or a crematory? I thought mortuary was, like, uh, oh, the place yeah. where they hold the bodies. Uh-huh. Maybe, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe right. I don't know. I right, um, go to a crematorium and ask them if I can burn their bodies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in my town that I grew up in, there was literally a crematorium right next to a fucking daycare. Me and my mom would always drive by me like, there's all these like preschool age children like breathing place. in the dead corpses of like What people. a weird place to have that. <laughs> it was a such weird. a weird place. Like, that's just poor planning on their the architectural side. <gasps> But, no, but, like, now they can have, like, a field trip there and learn how to, you know, bring corpses. <laughs> no, but, like, just like, imagine, like, you're playing outside and there's just a smoke coming in the crematorium and you're just breathing in the, like, dead ashes of, like, these people. <laughs> That's, like, a uh, three-year-old. Um, I mean, that had to have smelled, like, bad. I don't know. Anyway, that just reminded me of that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, anyways. Should... anyways, thank you guys so much for listening. As I said, chapters 22 to 27 next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.